Oh! Hi! Hi, well, I know those voices, and of course, many of our listeners know those voices as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited to welcome our featured guest this evening. You will remember them as the human hosts of the new zoo <laughs> review. We are so excited to welcome Doug and Emmy Joe. Welcome, guys. Well, thank you. We're real excited to be here. Yeah, we're very excited. I was telling all the listeners, Doug and Emmy, that if we do anything here, we're a time machine. And we're bringing back people 52 years. I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wasn't even conceived. So. What, what, was that quite unusual that somebody uh, actually 16 was watching, which was, you know, a teenager, and I'm watching the children's yeah. show? Yeah, I, I mean, think that, I think that's unusual. That is that is unusual, but uh, I, I'm so thankful you did because um, we we kind of spanned a lot of different ages and uh, a lot of diverse audiences. And uh, when I was writing it, I kind of wrote some things for a 15 year old. You know, Charlie the Owl had some pretty funny lines yeah. that went over the preschool head, but I think maybe got to you. <laughs> It just made me who I am. I mean, I'm I'm so blessed to have grown up with your show. And to know that it's been Thank so you. long, and you've been off the air so long, and yet you guys yeah. recently did an appearance, and grown-up people that are now grandparents and parents came up to you at your table and cried. Yes. Oh. Yeah, they really, it, it, it was pretty amazing. Um, we We just really didn't have an understanding of the impact that the show had made on so many lives because we thought it was just great entertainment for uh, children and had some good lessons that they could learn from it but we we did we had um, we've had a number of people that have just come up and cried and some of them came from very difficult and challenging home lives and they actually thought of us as their you know, wish we were their parents or, you know, a beloved aunt or uncle. And uh, one one man came up and, and said, you know, I would be in prison if it weren't for you. Wow. Because I had no understanding from my parents of right and wrong, and I learned that from your show. So that's, it's very rewarding. I'll tell you, it was, it's so humbling, Terry, to, to, uh, to think about yeah. that because, you know, for... The last 45, 50 years, we've been raising our kids. I've been uh, in Las Vegas with a production company um, doing other shows, other mm -hmm. things. And I, all of a sudden, our daughter, uh, last New Year's Eve, I think it was, came in and said, you know, Dad and Mom, I'm going to build a Facebook page for you because I, I think we, people want to see what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all of a sudden, it just took off, and we're almost 60,000 followers now and wow. uh, it's just humbling uh, to know that wow that show had an impact much mm -hmm. more than we ever thought now mm -hmm. you said you and had Go our, well our new zoo kids that are all grown up now like you are just wonderful we love meeting them and finding out how they have impacted their communities and their families and they're just wonderful people in all different lines of work. Oh, my goodness. Some have grown up to be teachers, librarians, entertainers, law enforcement. But they're just, they're wonderful. And I, I'm real proud of them. And you. Well, thank you. It, it was good that you taught family values. I guess you even got messages on Facebook of people that at the time your show was on had broken families. Yes. Yes. Yes, and that's so sad because we we never knew that. But there was um, one person who wrote in that um, he just used to wait, wait for his dad to leave in the morning because the dad was so angry and there was just so much anger in the home. And then the then he wanted his dad to leave so he could just turn on our show and pretend right. that that was where he lived. Right. So, you know, it's, it's sad that kids grow up in those kinds of environments. And if we were able to um, share some love and kindness 
I'm glad. That makes me thankful. And think about this, Terry. The the things that we did back then are are evergreen. I mean, those the the concepts and the shows and the the songs I'm finding out Mm -hmm. now still resonate Mm -hmm. with people, Mm -hmm. even 50 years later. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And we have many, many of our new zoo kids are now grandparents, and they want to have their grandchildren sitting on their lap and watching this, watching the shows. Yeah, they you, want to share it. You them. know, honestly, Emmy, uh, I I am a second generation new zoo fan. Terry, my dad, <laughs> turned me on to it. If I had children, I would have them watch it. I've tried to get my cats to watch it. They don't have an attention span, <laughs> but I, I will. I keep trying. But you know what? What I think is interesting, and I'm assuming everybody knows this, maybe they don't, is that you two obviously practice what you preach. What people saw on television is really who you are because Mm -hmm. you guys have been married for over 50 years. (laughs) Boy, it sure has gone fast. (laughs) This will be... This will be 53 years in, yeah. in December. Next yeah. Christmas will be 53 years. So how did you guys How did you guys meet? Because you actually met just before New Zoo happened, right? Well, about a year and a half. I was actually um, in Santa Maria, California, doing summer stock. And well, let, let me brag on em, Emmy Jo for a minute. Uh, before we met, she was in New York. For three years at the American Academy of Dramatic Art, Ooh. and actually, she actually got Best Actress uh, in her graduating class. Wow! <laughs> but at this time, but, but then, then uh, she went back to school at SMU, and uh, her professor there said, "Hey, come out to California. We got some roles that you'd be perfect for." And so, my professor at Cal State Fullerton, where where I was a major in playwriting. Um, my professor said, hey, go up to Santa Maria and, uh, you know, you can write music for the shows and, and uh, be in the shows. And so, as fate would have it, we both met up in Santa Maria in summer stock. And we just fell in love. And, and the reason we met is that I would go into the music building to work on my lines. And I would I hear this beautiful music somebody was playing the piano and singing and i looked in and it was Doug. so i started going in and listening to his songs which were just beautiful and then when i found out that he got up every morning at like 5 or 5 30 and went out and played basketball that did it for me (laughs) because i come from a pretty sports oriented family and i thought well this is great this guy's got everything. Uh, i got to ask, now, we, how many kids and grandkids? We have three children and 11 grandchildren. Wow. wow. And, the, and the, the, the grandchildren range from, let's see. 22? Well, Riggs, no, I think oh. older than that. Riggs is turning three, and um, Jason, I think, is turning 24. Oh. I think. I'm not sure. I have to <laughs> I can't. It's hard to keep track of all of them. Well, I know your daughter does a great job with the Facebook page. I got to yeah. ask because I've had other kids host on, and you know, I always wondered. Like Candace Bergen tells a story of her father Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Charlie was her brother, of course. <laughs> sat at the table. Yeah. What was it like for your kids to be raised with Freddie, Charlie, and Henrietta? Well, actually, they. They will tell you that they weren't even that aware of the show ah. because, you know, it was off the air at the time for most of the time that they were being raised, and we just never talked about it. We never wanted them to think that we were any different from anybody else. Uh-huh. And um, but when our daughter married, and I guess as she's gotten older, she sort of discovered News Review right. and what her parents did back then, and she. Just um, she she's just done a great job with that Facebook page. Well, I, I can t- I can tell you that we, you know, everybody would recognize us once in a while, and and the the kids growing up would say, "Oh, that's that's pretty cool, mom and dad." Uh-huh. But it wasn't it wasn't a big deal, you know, really, because we were doing other things. I mean, I was I was directing 
uh, you know, in Las Vegas. I mean, I can tell you a funny story, Terry. Sure. Um, you know, I've been directing uh, some of the stars that performed in Las Vegas, and we we were going to do the uh, use the Pointer Sisters in a commercial for Las Vegas, and uh, I was told, hey. That you can't get a performance out of them. They're not even going to give you five minutes. Well, somehow they found out that I was Doug on the New Zoo Review, <laughs> and they freaked out and they started singing the theme song in three-part harmony on stage. Oh my gosh! So <laughs> I was like freaking out. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. Doug, you so, just you just touched my heart because we were friends with the Pointer Sisters and specifically Anita, and uh, we were at some concert in vegas and they were sitting in front of us and there was a, a prince impersonator who was impersonating prince a singer prince and yeah. i was like tiffany those are the pointer sisters in front of us and they turned around and they were so nice they, they they're fun they, they were yeah. fun wow and then oh, they were they were so nice they, i, I guess really it wasn't were. just you doug that, that had a career outside now emmy you went back to college and became like a counselor right well, you, you certainly did your research. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, that's true. I, I did go back to school and got my master's in marriage and family counseling. And then um, I worked as, uh, actually as a youth director at our church because mm -hmm. by that time we had two teenage kids and we didn't have a youth director. So I signed up for that. And, um, you were actually the Christian education director. Yeah, and then I did <laughs> managed the Sunday school as well. And then I did counseling. But I, um, you know, I never actually got my license because at that time something absolutely wonderful happened when my daughter, Joanna, the one that you see on our Facebook mm -hmm. page, when she got married, um, they moved, she moved to Texas, which is where I'm from, of course. And uh, when I went down to our first grandson's first birthday, I was just heartbroken. I just cried all the way home, and I told Doug, I said, we're going to be the visiting grandparents. <laughs> and he said, you get back on that plane, and you go back down to Texas, and you buy that little farm that you've always wanted to have. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. Uh -huh. It's very for our daughter. Actually, she's moved closer to us now, and she's about five minutes away. But um, that's been a big part of my life since. For so the you, last, so you, have a, you, have a far, you have a farm now. So what you're telling me is you really have all the animals. We, yep. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We have a lot. No hippos. No, no hippos. No hippos. <laughs> we have no hippos and no No, fa no owls. But we have a rescue donkey. Yeah, he's blind in one eye. Aww. And a little pony. And then our neighbors uh, keep their cows over at our place. So that's, that's fun. Now and I, that's been the running joke between Terry and me because no. we're both animal lovers. But I, I we live in the Angeles National Forest. And I have, oh. a, I have a habit because we have a lot of wildlife around here. And if, yeah. there's, yeah. if there's any stray wildlife that is hungry... I, I feed all of them. And so he's oh, like, I, I, I have stray cats that come by. I have a squirrel that's lived in my retaining well for seven years. I have a raccoon now that comes around every night and gets cat food. He likes cat food. He eats out of a bowl. And my dad's like, oh, I can't believe you're domesticating a raccoon. I said, well, this is what happens when you watch New Zoo Review and shows like that. You become friends with the animals. <laughs> now, Doug, you've got a lot in common. It's wonderful. I'm so glad you have a heart for yes. animals yes. because I do too. And uh, you know, uh, there was when we went to San Diego, the Comic Con out there. Right. Um, I happened to have my picture taken with was actually a bomb sniffing dog <laughs> and that, that the police were using underneath to just sniff around all the boxes and stuff. And when Joanna posted that on our Facebook page. So many of our new two kids started sending me pictures of their animals, yes. their cats, their animals, and whatever. And a lot of them are, you know, rescues. Most, a lot of people right. just like to get a dog from a shelter or one that needs a home. Uh, yeah, all our dogs have been from shelters. Mm -hmm. Well, you were lucky to have kids, but, you know, a lot of people can't have kids. That's why God gave us pets. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. That's right. 
so true, Terry. Yeah. Now I wanted to I wanted to ask though, Doug, a little bit about the the genesis of of New Zoo, because I understand that that it kind of came from an idea because of your mom, right? Yeah, it really did. I mean, my my mom, uh, God bless her, worked in a toy store in Whittier, Whittier, California, and uh, I was at home going to college and. And uh, the lady that owned the toy store, her name was Barbara Atlas, and uh, she she asked my mom, she said, you know, I really want to do a kid's show, uh, and I, I want to do some needlepoint, and I have this beanbag frog named Freddy, and uh, do you know anybody that could help me with this? And she, my mom, being a good mom, said, well, my son is a playwriting major, maybe he could help you. So... I had a meeting with Barbara. She presented me with a beanbag frog, and she said, I, I want to use this frog in the show. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's the only prerequisite I have. And I said, well, well okay. <laughs> I'll see what I can come up with. Mm -hmm. So I, I went home that night. I wrote the theme song, sketched out the characters, the set, the, just about everything, and took it into her, and she loved it. She just looked out over it. And at that time, I was going with Emmy Joe, and I said, hey, Emmy Joe, how would you like to be a, in a kid's show? <laughs> now, I, I guess you said, in your opinion, people really like the theme song or they really hate it. What do you mean by that? Well, come on. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I have people say that to me all the time. I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, I have never, I really, I have never heard anybody say that they didn't like no, it. No, but they, they're, they're tired of it. They, they just, it does, it does stay in your head, that's for sure. Well, some of the, some of the parents said, if I hear that again, I'm going to throw something at the TV. <laughs> now, originally, it wasn't, uh, it, it was Freddy the Frog originally, but I, I understand it wasn't always an owl, right? Right. Initially, I had wanted it to be a giraffe and uh, you know the confines of a stage of a studio sound stage <laughs> that really wouldn't have worked so we thought well you know an owl is just as smart as a giraffe so mm -hmm. we, we we turned him into charlie the owl and i'm so glad we did mm -hmm. now i don't want to admit this to you but i did like some other children's programming <laughs> and i thought they your characters kind of look like they might have come from the creators of the other show because they looked a little Sid and Marty Croft. Well, you know, Sid and Marty Croft built our costume. Yeah, before. that's what I'm that's, getting at. There you go. There you go. That's where that's that's where they were involved. They were, um, you know, they had all those other kids shows on the air. I think right. pretty close to ours. <laughs> H.R. Puffin stuff and and um, Pigman and the Sea Monsters. I mean, so they were the kind of the experts in costume building. And we thought, wow, would, this would be great to have them build our costumes because we wanted those costumes to be real, yeah. the kids. And we, you know, and boy, they just did a, a wonderful job because uh, those characters were real to Emmy Joe and I. <laughs> now, I know that one of, one of the brothers recently passed away. Uh, it yeah. really hurt me because I, I met them too, and they were great people. Now, they kept in contact with you. To this day, because I see on Facebook, they want to get together with you to do some kind of project. Can you tell us what that might have been? Yeah, well, they I know one of their, their PR guy wants to do kind of a retrospective of, uh, you know, Sid and Marty Croft. And, and so they wanted us to contribute as far as what it meant for them to do the costumes. Uh. And, and so I just think it's going to be a, a part of a documentary. It just hasn't happened yet, but I'm really excited to do that because they've contributed so much to, to children's programming, too. Yeah. Now, am I right in understanding? What was the connection? I had read something online. There was a connection with New Zoo and Mattel because they had they had approval over your scripts, right? Well, yes. I mean, our, our first sponsor was Mattel Toys. In fact... Um, to watch, you know, remember I told you about Barbara Atlas. Mm -hmm. She, though she owned a toy store, she knew um, 
the handlers who owned Mattel Toys at the time in Hawthorne, California. And he arranged a live audition for Emmy Joe and I. Wow. And so I, we were, you know, we were playing all the characters. That's why it's called New Zoo Review, R-E-V-U-E. Because I was playing Freddy the Frog and, um, I, I, I was playing Henrietta Hippo in a falsetto voice and myself. <laughs> and Emmy Joe was playing, Emmy Joe was playing Emmy Joe and, uh, Charlie the Owl. And so we went, I, we went in there with my guitar on a darkened stage. Uh, you know, they had a little stage there and we performed the theme song. We did, I did a, a you know, a test script and song, um, you know, three or four songs from different episodes that I had written. And, uh, you know, we were just, after we finished, we thought we did a great job. And there was absolute silence. Mm. No applause. No nothing. So I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, oh. And uh, so they, they said, thank you very much. We'll, we'll be in touch. And uh, before I knew it, they, you know, they were building the set. And they were saying, we're going to do this pilot. Did, did and we I, not hear that they didn't like one script about greed? Oh, you definitely. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was, uh, yeah, I had a, a, some fights, not some fights, but some big discussions with uh, with them, you know, because I wanted Charlie the Owl to sing a song called I Got What I Need, which means be thankful for what you have, you don't need, all, and the, they just kind of freaked out because they said, we're a toy company. What do you mean? You do? We, we want kids to buy toys. <laughs> <laughs> we, want them to, we want them to need toys. And I, and I said, well, they would rather have the, the cardboard box to you know, fly down a hill. In. That's right. Right. And anyway, we, we went back and forth. They finally let the script go, and Charlie sang the song. Wow. I got what I need. <laughs> so, it was one of the more popular songs, too. Yeah. Oh. So, a lot, did Mattel release any any products of yours, like toys, or? Yeah, I mean, they, there was a bunch of toys that came out, and uh, Disney did an album uh, with us. And but you know, Emmy Joe and I were really—I uh, I don't mean that we were taken advantage of, but you know, back then it was like, hey, yeah. sign here. And we had really not much to do with the actual yeah. finances. We were and, kind of tightly controlled. Yeah. And we were two young kids. Yeah. We didn't have any protection. No. And we didn't have agents or anything like that. Had no attorney or, or So we didn't or really, something. you know, the, when kind of one of the interesting things is that um, in addition to Joanna's Facebook page, which is the News You Review, there's another page called the New Zoo Review Family Reunion, and that's just for our New Zoo kids mm -hmm. to post pictures, whatever they want to share with us. They share it on that page. And a lot of them just put up pictures of toys and New Zoo products that, that they, they kept for 50 years. Oh, that wow. we, never knew. We, we, never, we never knew about it. Yeah. In fact, there was one uh, one of Somebody that found a whole box full of letters that never got to Emmy, Joe, and I. They oh. found it in a, a rummage sale in a garage somewhere, and they said, hey, these, we need to send this to Doug and Emmy, Joe. And sure enough, I opened it, and Emmy, Joe, and I cried because none of those letters ever got to us. And it was sad because was sad. all those little children Wrote. would have wanted... A personal reply from us, and, and instead it was a corporate, a corporate reply, reply from the Zoo Review Corporate. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, you hear these stories all the time. You guys were were young, and I don't want to say naive, but people, good oh, people, no. <laughs> say it, say it. Uh, well, good people <laughs> like you get taken advantage of, and and I hope that what you do now, you realize that Hollywood really is a business, and it's a doggy dog business. And I guess you guys got new products now, right? That you're selling. Well, you know the the good thing about this is, um, I we got to design our some new stuff with, that has the nostalgia aspect to it, but it's all new products and new new ideas, and it's on our it's on our uh, Shopify store, 
on, on Facebook. And, mm -hmm. and it's and another so, thing that our daughter did. Yeah. She designed mm -hmm. the store. It's right there on on our Facebook page, and um, they're all things that that we we have we've designed and take pride in, like. At Christmas, Doug even did a news review Christmas ornaments, which yeah. are just adorable. Wow. So I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just thrilled to have it all come full circle, Terry. You know, I mean, it's just how God works things out. Well, here's you know? here's the magic question. I know at one time uh, there was a box set of episodes. I hope you guys had some control over that or some money. But if, if not, are, are they going to be coming out again where you yourself put them out? Well, this is a big blessing, too, because um, I have all of the shows, and I'm remastering them and recoloring them and re redoing the, uh, you know, tweaking the audio. Yes. And 14 of those episodes are on Prime Ticket right now, and I have about 20, 29 episodes on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So I am methodically going through all of the old episodes, freaking out, like, how did I write that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, uh, it's just been really something to, to go back and look at the 50 years later mm -hmm. and uh, just, you know, just to see the songs and the acting and everything that went right. on. But yes, those are going to be available. They may not be in that box set that they initially did. There was 59 episodes in that box set. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there's 196 episodes that a lot of those episodes have never seen the light of day. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you have all of those because so many times we've talked to people that have said, well, you know, the studio kept them or had negatives and there was yeah. a fire or I don't have them. I still remember uh, before his passing, uh, Paul Winchell was going around and he was reaching out to the fans and he was begging them if they had bootlegs of the Paul Winchell yeah. show to give them, give him a copy because mm -hmm. the studio had a fire and all of his negatives burned and he didn't have any copy. Oh, my, oh my goodness. Right. Well, you know, we did, there was a fire and my, you know, my white go go boots. Oh no! And, don't uh, tell me. They, you know, they're all gone. But I'll tell oh, you also the, the costumes were burned in the fire too, and had to be rebuilt. And but, and but, and the set was burned. <laughs> wow. Okay, I I see you guys on Facebook, and I hope you're in good health because you guys look great. Is there a chance you rebuilt the costumes that you guys could do this again? I'm hoping. What do you think, Doug? What? <laughs> you think we'll do it again? Well, <laughs> there is talk about that, and I don't think Emmy Joe and I would play ourselves. I think we would pay, be the grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> you you we, know? We would do cameos. Right. Okay, but, what? you know, I think, honestly, I think a great way to bring this show back would be animated. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I wanted to ask you about a a promo that I saw. I actually just stumbled across it on YouTube. Somebody else had posted it, and they had said that they had seen it on Joey Diora's website, but it was like a, a 30 or 45 second promo for an animated new zoo review. Was there going to be one at one time? Was it a, a promo? The only thing I can think of is that one of our new two kids um, is an is a very skilled animator, and he just on his own worked worked with Doug and and they came up with a well actually he did all the work, but it it's a theme song animated, and Joanna posted it on our Facebook page. If you scroll down there, you have to scroll down quite a bit. It's on there, and it is just adorable. It is so cute. I don't know what this other promo well, guys, is. No, I think, I, think I think they might be thinking of the same thing. The Maybe animated, it's the same the thing. animated theme song. No, Everybody was no, it wasn't. I will uh, let Joanna know that I will send a, a direct message, and I will send her a link to it. It was something that was, it was computer graphic animated, and it was Charlie the Owl, 
and he was talking on a screen to Henrietta Hippo, and he was talking about all the things that he had done, like the, going to the White House and things like that. It wasn't, it wasn't the theme song. And they were announcing there was going to be a new animated series. Yeah. Well, we would certainly oh, yeah. be interested in hearing. Well, I, I think that I think Barbara, back in the back in the day, she had something done like that. And and there was a plan to do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I I think I think you're absolutely right. The barber back then um, w was was thinking about doing that. But here again, we weren't involved. Oh, <laughs> I mean, well, I'll I, make sure we I'll, send I'll that to you. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'll, we, bet, we... I'll bet you. Uh, um, I'll bet you we weren't in that. Uh, animated episode. I think it was just the three animals. It wasn't even Freddy. It was Henrietta and Charlie, and the voices weren't weren't the voices. It was somebody else doing the voices. And from what I read on this guy's YouTube description, because he said he didn't, the guy who put it up on YouTube said he didn't know anything about it. It was just something huh. that he had seen on uh, Joey Diora's official website until that website was taken down. And so huh. I, I was like. I didn't know if this was something you guys were working on a reboot, but it it was totally totally different. So many people yeah. that do shows don't know things. We had a cast member <laughs> of the X Files, and he didn't know the show was canceled. We did, and we had to tell him <laughs> on the show. So I'm not surprised that you didn't know because it happened so much. But you know, in talking about the actors, uh, I know that when you guys did the you auditioned it for Mattel, Mattel it was just you two, but then when you guys went into production, you had a full-fledged cast and mm -hmm. I want you guys to talk a little bit about we'll, we'll get to the voiceover, but let, let's talk a little bit about the dancers, the actors that were in the three costumes. I have always been amazed, especially Especially with Henrietta's costume, that I, I would just fall over all the time. Like the, the the amount of skill to be able to move and dance in what I'm sure was a very heavy costume. So uh, tell us a little bit about the actors that were inside. Well, um, inside the Henrietta Hippo costume was Larry Thomas, who was one of the premier dancers in Hollywood. I mean, mm. if you look her up, Google her, uh, and you spell her name L-A-R-R-I, -R -R you'll find that she just was in so many wonderful shows and uh, movies and was just an artist. And she does things in those costumes that you just, you just can't believe it. When I see clips of the show now, I think, how did Larry do it? How did she have the strength? Because she was a very, very strong dancer. And it was quite remarkable. And those dance numbers were very difficult. Right. And, you know, she had to take the head off the costume and rest. And it was, she, it was, she had a hard job, but she was an artist. And all of our, and her, and her counterpart, the voice. Hazel Sherman had a very storied background in the entertainment industry, and we're just really fortunate to have them. I was in awe of Sharon Baird, who was in the costume of Charlie the Owl, because I used to watch her on TV on the Mickey Mouse Club. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we were getting to that, because, you know, it's so cool that you guys were kids' hosts of the new generation in the 70s, and then you're watching somebody mm -hmm. that started kids hosting with the Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah, I mean it was amazing. I was in just I had done a lot of work in the theater. I had done more work in the theater and nothing on television. So I had no idea how to do television and they were so helpful in in helping me understand the technical aspects of performing on t live on tape, well, right. it wasn't on live, but on tape. And uh, so we were just, to this day, I'm very grateful for them. So what about Charlie? Who was Charlie the Owl? Charlie was Sharon. What about Freddie? Oh. No, I mean, yeah, Sharon was Charlie. Oh. Freddie was, uh, Freddy was a, a dancer from, uh, I believe it was Argentina? Hmm. I think he was from Argentina. So Yanko Inoni. Yanko Inoni. And, and boy, what a great talent he was. I mean... Uh, to be able to work the mouth and, and work the hands, and he just brought that character to life. I mean, 
And Joni Robbins? And Joni Robbins voice. was the voice uh, of Freddie the Frog. She was a wonderful talent. And uh, we had two great actors for Charlie the Owl. Um, the Bob Holt was the first season, and Bill Calloway did the rest of the, the shows mm-hmm. as the voice of Charlie. And he was one of the reasons that, to this day, adults love the show. Oh, yeah. Yes. So good, so talented, and could improvise anything and so he's he's there are quite a few double entendres well you guys had a lot of uh celebrity guest stars too yeah well first of all it wasn't a wasn't a cameo but am i correct in understanding that you had uh the very first acting role of chuck woolery that's right we we gave chuck his first acting gig uh (laughs) playing 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 uh you know, Mr. Dingle. Old, Mr. Dingle, the postman, and he did a fabulous job. Uh, you know, for, uh, he was in the first uh, whole first season, I think. And as a matter of fact, um, Joanna every few months does uh, a live event mm-hmm. where all of our new new kids can join us, and we watch one of the old episodes, and they can comment, we can comment. And we just had one on Valentine's Day, and it was one that featured Chuck Woolery. Oh, I think uh, Henrietta Hibble would have loved a love connection. <laughs> 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 but you guys also had uh, other other big cameos, and, and I wanted to, to ask you about a couple of those. But first, before I, I name names, was there any one certain guest star that you were super excited to have? Well... First of all, let me give you the reason for the guest star, okay. Emmy Joe. <laughs> well, I was expecting Joanna, of course, uh-huh. and uh, I, I I had taken a leave of absence because <laughs> I had a new, brand new little baby. Well, I, so I, I, I think that the, the fact that you were really the, did, par- pardon me. I think the fact that you were pregnant would have been a little hard to explain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But anyway, the only guest star I really remember was Chuck Woolery, but all the other guest stars Doug remembers. Well, and the one that uh, that I just was amazed at was Henry Mancini. Yeah. I mean, so being a composer, there I was in Freddie's rowboat talking to Henry Mancini. Wow, <laughs> wow. That, that's... So, you, you can imagine, Terry, how that felt. And I, I remember just you know, off camera asking him, I said, do you have any advice for, for me as a, you know, a, a composer? I mean, I just uh, I admire your work. He said, just keep writing. Yeah. That's all. Just keep writing. And then uh, you had one of my favorite guests. She was on this show, Joanne Worley of Laughing. She cracked me up. She did, she did such a great job. In fact, I just, uh, the other day, I think I I recolored that and remastered it, and I was on the floor laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she is a hoot. And then, uh, just for our listeners, if you don't know, other guest stars that was on New Zoo Review includes uh, Jim Backus, who was, of course, known for Mr. Magoo and Gilligan's Island, Jesse White, who was the original Maytag repairman, Richard yep. Dawson um, from Hogan's Heroes also was a very famous, uh, known very famously for being a game show host. Um, yep. We mentioned Joanne Worley, and I, I would be remiss if I did not mention another gal who we just love, who was known for being a TV mom, but in person, she is just a firecracker, and that's June Lockhart. Mm-hmm. Yes, and She's still around. <laughs> yes, she God is. bless her. Thank God. You know, I got to mention, I I was 16, and, and I thought I was older than I was. I was 16 as a teenager. There was another young kid that that was uh, not so young, but still thought he was a kid, that you guys got to be on the Jerry Lewis telephone. How was that? Yeah. Oh, yes, we did. It was fun. I, I, I love that. That was just great. In fact, you can, uh, I think it was in 75, wasn't it? Uh, because you can go back and, and see our performance. <laughs> it was a great performance. We actually watched it on YouTube the other night. So I, I, it was so much Now, am so I, much fun. can you tell us how, 
this is a nerd question. I will fully admit that it's a nerd question because I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I'm peeling back the magic of television, I know that the actors in the costumes are different than the actors who did the voices. So my nerdy question is, how did that work in production? Did did they loop it after you guys filmed it? Or did the actors pre-listen to the recording so they would know what motions to make with the the, the cadence of the dialogue? Tiffany, you're going to be amazed and probably shocked at this because there was no looping. There was no thinking afterward in wow. editing or anything like that. It was all, they were in a sound booth, the voiceover people, uh, off stage with monitors that were showing the, what we were doing on set. Wow. And wow. They, imme- they immediately, when they heard their character's voice, they knew to, uh, they, the dancers knew to open their mouth. Oh my and gosh. So it was live sunk, just, just live mm-hmm. performance. And, uh, everything the music and even dialogue within the songs because of, i i wrote the songs as a musical comedy to to forward the action with the with the compositions but all of the music and some of that dialogue uh was pre-recorded so that was played back to the set and emmy joe and i had to lip sync and all the animals had to lip sync mm-hmm. and the sound guy had to cross fade from the pre-recorded track to the live uh, voices in the booth, wow. so it was it was all done live. <laughs> now, if, if that if that wasn't scary enough, Doug, and I guess Emmy uh, stayed home. Maybe she was with children, or whatever. But you went out on tour with Freddie, right? And you had to do that on stage. I did. I did, and I, uh, Freddie and I went out to do shopping centers and all kinds of stuff. I even walked in the Macy's parade I think when you're <laughs> behind an elephant as I recall <laughs> but um, but it, that was so much fun because here again I pre-recorded a show with Freddie's voice and then I was live with my guitar live and it was a combination of live and pre-recorded wow I have to give you guys all the kudos and the credit in the world because doing live anything is not easy and so many times we because our show our our radio show is live and we record it and it'll be available for on demand later but it goes out live Mm -hmm. and so many times we've had actors writers directors composers authors that they're they're great to do an interview until they find out it's live and it can't be edited afterwards and they're like no i can't Mm -hmm. do that they they're terrified no well, you know, a lot of the artists today um, that are Grammy winners and singing songs and stuff, they have to rely on the studio. Right. Yeah. I mean, let, let's let's face it. I mean, they have to be, be auto-tuned or they have to have this done or that done. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a very, uh, you know, technology is great, but there's something to be said for, I think that's our background with mm-hmm. live theater yeah. and I think, Emmy Joe, don't you think? No, absolutely. I think we were just it was just normal. I never thought of it even as being difficult. I guess it was, but, you know, it was just my background being in theater, and we had such great professionals around us, and everybody just did their part, and we were a very close little family. And uh, everybody that worked on the, all, all the grips and the, the people that helped, like the stage manager and the two cards guy, we, they were just friendly and consummate professionals, and it, it really, looking back on it, was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I, I'm so thankful. When we went to Philadelphia this uh, fall, we got to see Sharon Baird. Oh, cool. And we hadn't, in, well, I guess, since, in 50 years. So right. it was wonderful to have that reunion with her. Well, you know, I think you inspired a lot of people. And I can't say for sure, but maybe you inspired him. Uh, many years later, there was another show that kind of touched on your concept. What did you think of Zoobly Zoo? Well, 
I, you know, there was a not only that show, but uh, Barney. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I never thought yeah. of that. I, I never well, thought of that. Think about that, because a lot of shows, I don't want to say they copied us, but they... Inspired. They, they, they were I think, inspired. They, I think we inspired them. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But, and I, I'm, I'm flattered with that, because I think we did uh, set kind of a standard there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, because Sesame Street was doing 1, 2, 3, ABC, and we didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to, to show kids how do you relate to your mom, your dad, your cousin, your brother and sister, and, you know, let's treat each other kindly, mm-hmm. and, and uh, let's follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that, we kind of wanted to get those messages across in a fun entertaining way and there's such a, a need for that today oh yes there is um, that's we we have so many of our new zoo kids say we just want to see this show back because you know it's nice to have a show that mom can go in and prepare dinner and not have to worry about what's on the tv and shows that you know that if your child's watching them they're going to be taught Really important concept right. to have a a, 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 a a good culture of kindness and mutual respect, and so I think the show is a has a has true lasting value. Well, knowing some reason. shows may have been inspired by you, and I know you guys come from a very moral background, believing in 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 God and and spirit and family. Was there any children's shows? or children's live show hosts that inspired Emmy and Doug to do what you did? Um, you know, to be honest, Terry, I was so naive, I didn't even know any were out there. <laughs> I mean, we, we, I mean we, have, we have come to, of course, know about Mr. Rogers and, and you know, those kind of shows. That, but even though they were there at the same time, we were so involved in what we were doing that... I had no idea. And, you know, we were also doing the show because we didn't have children ourselves. I mean, we love children, and yeah. we always enjoyed being around kids, and I've always kind of been a child at heart, I think. But it wasn't until Joanna started that Facebook page that we began to really understand the impact we had had. And the thing that is profound about it is that every child that watches something on television, it goes into their little computers, yes. their little minds. Yeah. And it's very, very important because those impressions are lasting impressions. And I'm very thankful that what we put into children's minds are positive, life-giving concepts. That we that's one of the things that we've heard over and over and over again from our new two kids is what they they remember. Some of them are in certain professions right now because they were inspired by something they heard on our show or saw something on the show. And um, so I, I just I hope there will be more children's shows that are very very cognizant of you know what we're saying is going to stay in their head so yep. let's make sure it's something that we want to be there and frankly i'm 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 a little worried about that because it seems like everybody has an agenda now that right. is, is not letting the kids be kids well and that was kind of leading it that's pr- kind of a perfect lead into my next question guys is that you know terry and i were talking about before you came on the air how society and times were very different back in mm-hmm. in 1972 i mean not only you know as an adult like society is, and is very different nowadays with things like you know the politics that are going on and the pandemic and everything but even for children back in the 70s kids would go outside and play they knew when the street mm-hmm. lights came on it was time to go inside uh-huh. they drank from a, a water hose they didn't have to have purified water so now if you were to ever do any kind of reboot or redo or reimagining of New Zoo, 
do you think that the messages that you would put across would change? Would you tackle some of the more current problems that kids face? Because even children nowadays are, unfortunately, have to be a little bit more adult <laughs> than kids were decades ago because of the way society It's is. a lot more politically correct now. You know. mm-hmm. Well, a lot of those concepts that we dealt with are very important for today. Children are bullied today. Yes. Just like, the, you know, when we did New Zoo, we did a show on bullying. Violence. And violence. And and the concept of, and Mr. Rogers did this so well, the concept of just being kind and, and respecting each other. We can all have differences of opinions about many things, but we can still treat each other respectfully. We can still be kind to each other. And we, we've got to find some way to tone down the violence and the, the anger that we see in our country. And I think um, it, it starts with little children. And it starts with parents. who, when, they're, you know, when the kids are fighting, they sit down now, teaching them the golden rule. Just treat everybody just the way you would want to be treated. I remember my mother saying that to me. Now, Emily Jo, you, would you want little, would you want people to treat you the way you just treated Sally Sue? And I say, no, ma'am. Well, and uh, you know, it may have to be a little bit restructured. Be, you know, maybe a a little bit faster pace and more things put in there that the kids today would would relate to. But I think the the actual core messages. Are, will still be relevant, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm working on a new kid show. Speaking of being relevant, um, that that addresses the internet, and uh, it's kind of a fun show. It has three songs in it, like New Zoo Review, and you know, I just think something like that could could go a long way. Mm-hmm. Is, is there any resemblance to New Zoo at all, or totally different? This is totally different. This is a different format and different, uh, you know, different characters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I've never stopped creating. Right. Beyond and and right. and producing. I know you got this whole production thing going to where you're producing Christian songs, right? Writing and for other artists. But before we talk about that, because we we're going up just the top of the hour here, uh, it's amazing to me that there was a new Zoo Review album released in the 2000s very recently. Well, you know, I did that. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what we know. We were very surprised. And, and, like, oh, it just we're, came we're, out. We're glad you did, Doug. We're glad. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I, I I did two of two of those albums, Volume One and Volume Two, songs from the New Zoo Review, and I'm I'm amazed that I I get my iTunes and Spotify, and people are actually playing them. And then I, I wanted to take a minute to just let everybody know that if you go over on Spotify and you go over on like Amazon Music, iTunes, things like that, and you just type in Doug's name, Doug Momery, some of your other compositions are up there too. They're wonderful. Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate that because I pour my heart and soul into those. Uh, and they, uh, a lot of those uh, songs have, have videos to them that I produced as well and uh, they're they're pretty cool so have you worked uh with any name artists that we might know or is it like mostly christian artists or no it's mainly just a, a bunch of musicians that i know in la that uh that, that's a record with me and and uh you know now we used to record on two 24 tracks right. tied together uh you know with two inch tapes <laughs> and now i can do it on my phone and Right. Somebody can send me. Somebody can bit, you know send me a bass part, <laughs> and I can, uh, so it, it's kind of changed. But uh, the, the the magic has to change. I still love composing. That was my favorite part of your daughter's Facebook when you were amazed that instead of uh, two and a half inch tape, you're doing it on a phone. <laughs> 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 I'm on a phone. Look at well, this. Well, yeah. well, you know, I I mean. Technically, I've had to reinvent myself a lot. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Now, before we go, Terry made me promise not to forget to mention for all of our listeners out there who are Emmy Joe fans, there is actually one episode of Marcus Welby where you had a role, right? <laughs> they could they can hunt that episode out and see you. Yeah. In. Actually, I'd like to hunt it down. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, but yeah. I guess I was in Marcus Welby. You had a role. I think you were a nurse. Yeah. I, I, I guess. Reminds me of, I, I, that's something I honestly had forgotten, so thank you. I guess I guess being a nurse, they didn't let you wear boots. <laughs> no, no. But I'll tell you what, a lot of little girls had white boots because they saw them first on the news you review. <laughs> Doug, if you want funding for this new series of yours, Sell autograph boots. <laughs> Have Emmy autograph yeah. boots. Send them out. You're, you're going to make All the right. Well, last question before we wrap up, guys. I, I would just like both of you to let us know what your number one favorite memory from New Zoo is, whether it was filming at Desilu Studios or, or Warner was, Brothers or, or Warner Brothers or being out on the road or the fa- what is your your favorite? What thing in your heart is your absolute favorite? memory of New Zoo Review? Well, for me, my favorite memory was going to the White House yes. and perform for the children of the foreign diplomats yeah. and wow. seeing the White House all decorated for Christmas. That was that was amazing. I, I have to say that, too. Uh, the, the two times we visited the White House to perform for the kids was magic. <laughs> what What administration was that? Nixon. Uh, Nixon. Nixon. Wow. wow. Very good. That's so cool. Mrs. Nixon was the hostess for the um, Christmas performance, and then when we did the Easter egg role, uh, that was, uh, was it? Trisha. Was it Trisha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about the Easter egg role is we were the only act. I mean, now they've got everybody and their brother <laughs> <laughs> on, right. on the South Lawn, but when we did it back then, we were they built a st- stage and sound system, and we were, you know, the only performers. The same with the with the uh, Christmas show. Uh, Nixon was, Nixon was, was cool. He was on Rowan and Martin's laughing. I mean, he, he got out with Elvis. he got showbiz yeah. and met with Elvis Presley. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, I'm one of your kids, and my daughter's one of your kids, and we're all your kids. But you know something? Aww. Your kids were really and are really lucky. I want to make sure it's in the present tense. Thank God you're still with us. Your kids are so lucky to have you as their real mom and dad. Oh, well, thank, you, thank you. That's, we're blessed to have them, and we're blessed to have these 11 grandchildren. I wouldn't take anything for them, but I will just tell you that all of you who are our new two kids, I claim you as our new two kids, and I love you to pieces. Yeah. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure to meet our new two kids, get to share a hug with them, and and hear a little about their lives. It's, it's wonderful. It's a great thrill to me to know you people are in person who you are on TV. I mean, even Buffalo Bob Smith owned a liquor store. That kind of made me sad. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but to know you guys are the great people we see on TV. And my good friend, your publicist, Danny Durrani, he said they are beautiful people. Thank you. No, we love Danny too. Yeah, da- Danny's really <laughs> done a lot for us. He really has. We never had a publicist before. <laughs> he's a, he's just, he's a, yeah, well, he's I, just I, a wonderful. He's a wonderful, very, very kind man. Yeah, and he will not take advantage of you. You got a good guy there. Oh, yeah. I, well, we know that. I mean, he's been he's, he's treated us just magnificently, mm-hmm. and we were so, so thankful for him. Well, I want to let all of our listeners, all of the new zoo kids out there, and fans and friends and family, new and old, know that you guys should check out the Facebook page that Doug and Emmy Joe's daughter put together. And the YouTube page. And the YouTube page. Just go over there and just look up New Zoo Review. It's the official page. Um, Also, if you're over on our pages, I've linked to it, so you can head over there from there as well. And you can watch how many episodes, too? There are right now. Yeah, and also... On the on the Facebook page, make sure that everyone goes to the News Review 
because there are other Facebook pages that, you know, for News Who that we didn't have anything to do with. Right. And this is the page that Joanna puts the clips up and we have our live events on. Yes, absolutely. And I believe uh, there's, I think, 21 or 22 episodes on the New Zoo Review YouTube page as well that you guys yes. can watch. Yes, yeah, there is. And there's some shorts on there, too, that I've been uh, experimenting with. Uh, you might find those interesting, too. Very cool. Well, I, I know you've directed commercials and you have a production company. Keep on doing kids' programming, Doug. Please, we need you. We need you. Well, thank you. I, I, I really want to because that's where my heart is. Yeah. And uh, I, I I really feel that we could still make a difference. I think so. Yeah, well, God had a plan when he got you two together. I'll tell you, you guys are made for each other. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't our plan. It was his. That's right. <laughs> All right. I want to thank you both so much for spending some time with us. And uh, we've really, really enjoyed it. And we hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. Thank this you. This has been one of the most fun interviews we've had and we are just really hoping one of these days we get to meet you yeah love yes, to. absolutely we would love to meet you i, I want to come out to the farm and hang out with with the animals well, well, you just come, come on out to dallas we'll take you out to dinner okay and i want to be 16 again and you're going to make that happen <laughs> but wait if i come out i i want to meet freddie well, we can arrange that. Okay. We all absolutely right. can arrange that. Yeah, we, um, we, rebuilt, we rebuilt all the costumes. So. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you guys so much uh, for spending some time with us, and have a great rest of your weekend. God bless you both. God bless you, too. Thank all you right. so very much. Okay. All right. Talk Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.